Okay, we're back with tutorial four, and we're now wanting to look at part C of the question. The industry with the greatest representation in the index, and what percentage does the industry have of the index? Well, in order to do that, we we need to generate a list of different industries. We have a list of the, all the 102 um, companies in the FTSE 100, but there are going to be some industries which have more than one company in the FTSE 100 index. So, I need to generate a list. Now, I could do that manually by starting here and typing GNFI, there's one, and SUPSV, and so on. But that's rather tedious, and what I'm trying to get over is how we can automate a number of procedures. So I'm going to introduce a new worksheet. So I right-click, click Insert, right-click again and click Rename. So we'll call this Industries. And now highlight this column, copy it, and paste it here. There we go. I'm now going to sort it. So I highlight the column, choose data, sort. It knows it's got a header on, I'm going to sort it in ascending order. There we go. So as you can see, here's one unique value. There's another. There's another. There's another. So I would like to find some way of being able to filter this out. And one way I could do it, and I could do it manually, I could go 1, 0, 0, then we've got a new one, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. You get the idea. And then what I could do is I'll, I'll continue to the next one, 1. And then I could highlight that column, select data, filter, auto filter, and just filter out all of the ones. Because the ones were the ones with, that I put alongside when we started a new category. However, I don't think that's very sophisticated. And what I would rather do is the f I want to automate the procedure. So I'm going to put a 1 next to the first one. And there are many different ways of doing this. And then I would use an if statement. So I'll type equals because I'm in the formula. And I'll do an if statement. So here it tells you the logical test. So this is the test. If this value here is equal to this value here, then I'm basically saying I've already picked up that that's a, I have that industry. If, if they're the same, I put a 0. Otherwise, I put a 1. So we come here. Well, A3 is equal to A2, so it puts a 0. I drag it down. Well, again, A4 is equal to A3, so I put a 0. But now I've got a new category, so it should put a 1 here. And it does. Because now this figure, this value is not equal to that value, so it's a new category. So I drag it down. And so now I've got a series of 1s and zeros. Okay. Again, I highlight that column, I do data, filter, auto filter, and now I'm going to pick out all of the ones. So look, I now have a list of all of the industries. So I highlight those, edit, copy, and I'll go back to here, and I'll paste those values in. So now I've got a list of industries. This worksheet has served its purpose now. So that's the industry. And I need to count up how many they are, how many firms in that particular industry. So I would use a, a count if function. Again, I could do it by hand, but I'm trying to get over the point that we automate things. So I'm going to use the count if function. So I'll use the function wizard. I'll press C to scroll down to count if. There it is. The number of cells within a range that meet a given condition. Okay, so what's my range? My range is the list of industries. There we go. There's my list of industries. My criteria, well, my criteria is if it has that value there in. And so you can see there are three aer aerospace companies, which I could verify by coming back to this spreadsheet. On removing the filter, data filter, and on ticking that, and there's one, two, three firms that I copied over in the aerospace industry. So, if I wished, I could. But if I copy it down, you know that C2 is going to change to C3, etc. So I get highlight that as I did before. Press F4, and it's good. And now I can copy it down. And so as we can see, banks with the largest population and mining stocks with the second.
I could have used max etc to to do that so I've now identified the representation of industries in the FTSE 100 and of course this will evolve over time as the index is re rebalanced on a quarterly basis to reflect the the top 100 and two market values. The second part of this question asks, what percentage does this industry have of the index? Well, it wasn't a case I was looking for of simply saying, well, nine is a proportion of 102. I was looking to say, well, what is the market value of those companies? So having got a, a list of all the industries and the number of firms from that industry representing the FTSE 100, we want to find the, the market value of those firms, which we can do using a function sum if. Again, through the function wizard, sum if. So the range, the criteria, and the sum range. So it's a very tricky function, this, but hopefully we can talk through it. So here's the, the range. I just select the names of the, the different industries. The criteria, of course, is if that industry is in that range and the range that I want to sum is of course the differing market values and there's the answer so it's added up all of the aerospace firms and it's given that answer so 25 billion let me just center that and change the format format cells currency pounds now if I drag this down now of course it's going to alter the, the C2 to C103 and A2 to A103 so I used my F4 to impose the dollars and as I drag down it'll take on banks on the next one so banks are the largest sector and I drag all the way down and just to check if I take the sum of all of these it should give me the answer that I had calculated before, which it does. Now if I want to find the proportion of these firms, so I could take this and divide it by the total. Now just put a lock on that one. And if I change the right click format cells, percentage I can get the cell to display as a percentage and then if I drag down I can get all of the different percentages to make sure I've done it correctly these should sum to 100% they do I haven't made any mistakes and we can see that this section here the banking sector accounts for almost 21% of the FTSE 100 so anything any shock to the banking sector will have a great impact on the FTSE 100 due to the existence of nine stocks from the banking sector in the FTSE 100 index. The question also asks you, do the results support the points made in the Financial Times above, which was that two firms, Rentacle and Schroders, would be ejected from the FTSE 100 when the, the market is up for review. And you can see why, because they're well, Schroders in particularly well, there's two different types of shorter stock there. That the two shorter stocks and the rent to kill stock are at the bottom of the, the list of market values. So there we have it with question four.